really the genesis of the P-Long study was to help guys find something that was effective and had zero risk of complications and actually is fairly reasonably priced also for, oh, for that... most folks, especially as compared to the other technologies. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Thrive State Podcast. Can you believe it? It's already the new year, 2023, two years in to the Thrive State Podcast and 101 episodes in. I'm so grateful for everybody who has joined us in this journey of building, of discovering people, thoughts, ideas, habits, to be able to take our life and the lives of the people around us to the next level. I truly believe that if we work on the choices that we make in every single moment, we can really create this energy in the body, this thrive state. And this thrive state is, again, what actually activates our DNA, our biology, to give us optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. So I wanna say happy new year to everybody. And please join us on this journey again, because I know as the new year comes along, there's gonna be a feeling inside of you that you can do more, you can be more, and it is true. And you'll need some new ideas to implement on your biggest goal, your biggest vision to become the best part of you. And if you're just joining us for the first time, I wanna say welcome to the Thrive State Podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast and please leave us five stars wherever podcasts are being played because it will really help this show grow. And if you haven't already, pick up my book, Thrive State, Your Blueprint for Optimal Health, Longevity, and Peak Performance. Wherever books are sold, but you can find it at thrivestatebook.com. In a few months, we will actually be releasing the second edition of Thrive State, where I actually talk a little bit about what stops us from becoming the best versions of ourselves? What stops us from getting into the Thrive State? And I set down an impact framework for you to move past what's stopping you. I also start talking about the Thrive State in our families, in our teams, and in, in our organizations, because this energy that we can create within ourselves, we can bring out to the people around us and not only elevate our own energy, but elevate those around us as well. All that is new material in the second edition of Thrive State. So please stay tuned for that. Now, I wanted to start off 2023 with a bang. And I'm going to reintroduce a guest that I had last year, but he recently had a first in class study of its kind on penile augmentation. Men might be super interested in listening to this podcast if they've ever considered augmenting the length and girth of their penis. And it might be interesting for a woman to listen to this, uh, to think about all the regenerative technologies that are not only available in the male penile augmentation space, but where these applications can be applied throughout the body, female rejuvenation, hair loss, skin aging, so without further ado, I'm going to bring back my guest and good friend, Dr. Judson Brandeis, who's actually a world-renowned urologist. And he recently came out with a groundbreaking study called the P-Long trial. The P-Long trial is actually one of the first studies to combine regenerative technologies with penile augmentation. Now, regenerative technologies include things like platelet-rich plasma, which has growth factors, things like stem cells things like exosomes, and these regenerative therapeutics have been used in skin, in hair, and in sexual organs. For those who are not interested in penile augmentation, just knowing about regenerative technology will give you a clue as to the future of regenerative technologies as it pertains to different areas of our body. Dr. Brandeis is going to again present the P-Long protocol, which is actually the only minimally invasive male penile augmentation treatment existing in medicine that increases both the length and the girth of a man's penis. It uses a combination of platelet-rich plasma, which is a type of regenerative technology, 
stretching traction, and nitric oxide boosting supplements to increase the size and growth of a man's penis. The results of the study was actually presented at the prestigious Sexual Medicine Society of North America conference last year. So on this podcast, we actually dive into why Dr. Brandeis invented the P-Long protocol, the details of this particular study, how this procedure compares to other more dangerous methods of penile augmentation, why platelet-rich plasma has been proven to be such an, an effective tool for penile augmentation, what the study results actually mean for the future of men's health, how to know if you're a good candidate for the P-Long protocol. Are there men that would not be a good candidate for the P-Long protocol? Again, whether or not you are into penile augmentation or not, this podcast will give you an idea of where regenerative medicine is going and the different applications in different parts of the body. So please enjoy this episode with Dr. Judson Brandeis. Dr. Judson Brandeis, welcome back to your second appearance on the Thrive Estate podcast. Oh man, I'm so honored to be back. Um, I, must have, I must have done an okay job the first time. You did a great job the first time. You know, in the first round, we got a chance to talk about um, your book, The 21st Century Man, and went into all the lifestyle, um, you know, and different components as it pertains to men's health. But this time I'm bringing you back because there's a revolutionary study that you are just uh, announcing to the world this P long protocol that I want to get into. Now, you remember from last time I owe you dinner from for <laughs> for uh, winning the Thrive in Five um, game show. And I've got five additional questions. Again, really, really quick, just to kind of get the ball rolling. Are you ready to play and win again on the Five to Thrive? Absolutely. And All double right. down. Double down. Here we go. Uh, for double or nothing, uh, question number one is, what is the one thing you're looking forward to most in 2023? Uh, reconnecting with my wife. Oh, okay. Question number two, what new hobby or skill do you want to develop next? Uh, I want to get back to snowboarding. Snowboarding. Excellent. Question number three is, what is your favorite meal? You know, I've been really into, they have this really good ahi tuna and salmon sashimi at Costco. Oh. And it's like super fresh. It's like better than any sushi restaurant I've ever been to. So I get it. Wow. I eat it like two or three times a week. No, wow. I kid you not. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, Costco is going to have lines out the door after yeah. getting that thing. <laughs> Question number four is, has there been a book that has been on your list that you haven't gotten to yet that you're excited to get, dive into next? Oh, man, I have a huge stack of books. Unfortunately, All right, what are you committing that, to? What next one are you going to hit up? You know, I see I'm going to lose my dinner on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you know, I always dip back into Tools for Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Team and, uh, you know, I like books that uh, you don't really read from from A to Z. You can just kind of read 10, 15 minutes and get a lot out of it. Excellent. And my last question for you today is what are you hoping? And we're going to dive into more of this a little bit later. But what are you hoping uh, the world gets to see with, with this P-Long protocol? You know, what I hope is that guys that are interested in having larger, more functional penises have a way that's totally safe. I mean, that's the problem. That was the genesis of the P-Long study. Not that I really care about how long guys' penises are, because I really don't, <laughs> right? Um, but as a, as a urologist and a sexual medicine specialist, I see men who are, for whatever reason, insecure about their manhood, whether it's some girlfriend made a comment, you know, oh, you're not as big as my old boyfriend or, you know, someone in the locker room made fun of them or, you know, they watch too much pornography and they see guys with, with bigger penises and they're, they're insecure about that. And so guys pay lots of money to get fillers injected in their penis or fat transfers or their surgeries that, and I've seen catastrophes from all of those different things. And so 
really the genesis of the P-Long study was to help guys find something that was effective and had zero risk of complications and actually is fairly reasonably priced also for, oh, for that, most folks, especially as compared to the other technologies. Well, we're going to dive into all of that in a second. You, first of all, you doubled or nothing. And, and now I'm out two dinners the next time we meet. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you spoke a little bit about the inspiration of why you uh, created uh, this study. But let's dive into a little bit about what you were mentioning of uh, larger penis or a more functioning penis are these things in, in in guys heads in terms of their their performance and is there should you know is there something to having a larger penis you know i think most women would probably say no mm -hmm. uh, women care more about girth because it stretches the, the vaginal tissue and most of the the nerve tissue in a vagina is more towards the entritus mm -hmm. so you know, stimulating a woman's deeper aspect of their vagina or their cervix really doesn't do much for them. It's, you know, the, the clitoris and the clitoral bulb are more uh, external structures. And mm -hmm. so, you know, having a longer penis isn't necessarily going to give a woman more pleasure. It's more uh, a girthy penis. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys will use traction devices or stretching devices to get length because you know when you walk in naked in the locker room some guys want other guys to look at them and say wow you know that guy's an alpha male he's got a long penis but at the end of the day what women really care about is girth um, mm. and so that was the nice thing about the p-long study is the first study to ever look at both length and girth and also function. So, you know, by definition, the guys that showed up in the, the P-Long study were kind of between the ages of 20 and 55. I had to include myself. So I had to bring the age limit up to 55. So I didn't <laughs> want to be, I didn't want to age out of the study, but also they had to have normal function because the thing is, if you have erectile dysfunction, then your penis is going to basically start to shrink anyway, mm. because you're not filling the penis up under pressure. And so you know, we recruited the guys between 20 and 55 with normal erectile function. And then we used uh, a combination therapy. So PRP. So PRP is platelet rich plasma. Mm. So what we do is we draw 60 cc's of blood and we spin the blood down in a centrifuge. when you spin blood in a centrifuge, the red blood cells go to the bottom. Mm -hmm. The plasma, which is the water that your, your blood floats in, goes to the top. And in the middle, you get the, the, platelets and some white blood cells. And if you isolate the platelets and inject them back into the body and they're activated, meaning that they're in a clotting cascade. And when platelets are in a clotting cascade, they release clotting factors to, to cause a clot, but they also release growth factors. And the reason they release growth factors is because it initiates healing, mm. right? So when you injure yourself, you want to heal right away. You know, if you're an animal or a caveman and you don't heal quickly, you're going to get infected. If you get infected, you're going to die. So your body created or evolution or the good Lord or whoever you want to blame it on created this system where you clot and you reheal. And so over the past 20 years, physicians have been taking advantage of the fact that platelets cause rehealing. And so we use it for hair regrowth. We use it to fix orthopedic you know, injuries. We use it to improve wound healing. And urology, we use it to improve penile function and also uh, clitoral function. Mm, amazing. So yes, platelet-rich plasma. So that's, uh, let's go into the, the study a little bit in terms of the, the details. They get the platelet-rich plasma. Do you, do they get basically a one session injection or do they get multiple and let's then talk about what stretching devices and nitric oxide supplements sure. are included as well yeah so the injection is i developed a technique using ultrasound to guide the injection right because up until now guys were just taking needles and sticking in their penises and the the erectile bodies are big and they're they're not that difficult to to find with a needle. The problem is a lot of times people go through and through yeah. the, the corpora. And so by using an ultrasound, we're able to guide the placement of the needle. And, and that's part of my 
uh, training protocol for P-Long providers. And so we do that on the left and the right, corpora, even though they're kind of joined a little bit in the middle, uh, it's good to do both sides. That procedure takes me three minutes. Uh, it's minimally uncomfortable, believe it or not. And it's once a month for six months. Mm, okay, once a month for and, six months. And we use a, a special, what we call a double spin PRP machine to give us really high concentrations of platelets. So we try to get a, between a billion and a billion and a half platelets. Amazing. So once a month for six months, and then tell us a little bit about the traction device that uh, that people uh, are on uh, in this protocol. Yeah. So this traction was the device was developed by a friend of mine at the Mayo Clinic, and uh, and it's extremely well researched. And it was developed for what we call Peyronie's disease. So it's a curvature of the penis uh, due to scar tissue. Uh, and there's really good data in the in the Peyronie's literature that it grows the penis about two centimeters, so a little bit less than an inch. And so um, guys have to use that 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening. Mm, all right. And this uh, is every day. For the, for the for every day for the six month period. I mean, if you miss a day, it's not the end of the world. But when you go to the orthodontist, right, you get braces put on. And if you're an adult and you go to the orthodontist, your teeth move very, very slowly, right? Because there's not a lot of growth and remodeling that's happening in an adult, right? And But a friend of mine was an orthodontist and he said he had this woman come in who was pregnant with twins. And he said he's never seen teeth move so fast in all his life. And the reason for that is because she had massive amounts of growth factor floating through her body mm -hmm. due to the twin pregnancy. And that sort of set a light bulb off in my, in my brain. And I said, you know, you could do this like if you see pictures from national geographic of women uh, or this tribe in africa that have these super long necks with the you know the necklaces around yeah. them you know in biologic systems bi biologic systems by definition are malleable you can you can change them you can so if you continuously apply pressure uh, and that's why if you use a traction device for eight or ten hours a day you can lengthen your penis but i mean you guys are seem like a, a busy group of people selling restaurants and flying to Thailand and all that kind of stuff. You probably don't have eight to 10 hours a day to stretch your penis. Uh, and so I wanted to create something that was doable by uh, a normal human being with a normal job. So a normal human being with a normal job can spend 35 minutes in the morning and 35 minutes in the evening to increase the length and girth and function of their penis. If that's, what they choose. And, you know, the thing is like when I was on the shameless sex podcast, you know, we talked about like, I'm not here to convince people to do this. I'm not here to shame people. Like, you know, your, your penis isn't big enough. That's not my gig, right? That's, that's entirely up to you. But if that's something that bothers you and, and when they do studies about 55% of guys feel that their penis isn't long enough or they, they want a bigger penis. And if that's you and you are willing or want to do something about it, you know, here's something that's natural, something that actually works and something that, you know, won't break the bank that will achieve that for you. Well, that's amazing. And let's talk a little bit about, so it's basically one shot per month for six months with stretching uh, the penis 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. Let's talk about the supplements. You've got some nitric oxide supplements that people are taking. Yeah. So, you know, when I was at UCLA, my professor, Lou Ignaro, won the Nobel Prize for discovering nitric oxide as a second messenger. And so what, what nitric oxide does is it's released from nerves onto blood vessels. And those blood vessels dilate in response to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide creates something called cyclic GMP, right? And I'm not going to quiz you guys after this, but cyclic GMP in all mammals, men, women, cats, dogs, giraffes, rhinoceroses, everyone uses nitric oxide from the nerves to open up blood vessels, right? And you generate what's called cyclic GMP. And cyclic GMP is what creates a cascade that opens up these blood vessels. Now, another one of my professors, Jake Rafer, and a friend of mine, Bill Aronson, did research in the lab looking at the mechanism of what we call a PDE5 inhibitor. 
Mm -hmm. which is Viagra, Cialis, Tadalafil, what they do is they block the breakdown of cyclic GMP, right? So the whole purpose is to increase cyclic GMP and to prevent the breakdown. Now, as you get older, your nitric oxide declines. So by the age of 50, even if you're doing pretty well, you know, you have good diet, you exercise, you're going to be at 50% of your endogenous nitric oxide production, right? And so what does that mean? You know, it's kind of like turning the dimming switch down in a room. You know, when you get to 50% light, you can still see, you can still play violin, you can still do most of the stuff that you normally do, but the, the acuity just quite isn't there. And most people kind of say, well, that's part of the aging process, or maybe that's testosterone or IGF-1 or a human growth hormone, or, you know, I was sick last week. But there's definitely a noticeable difference when you take something that has a, a nitric oxide booster. And what is a nitric oxide booster? There's two ways, and I, stop me if I'm getting too biochemical, yeah. um, but I get really excited about this kind of stuff because it's really, nitric oxide boosters are um, really, really amazing because there's no side effects whatsoever mm -hmm. from these things. I, I, was, I did a, a video and I took, I think 10 nitric oxide boosting pills. And, you know, I woke up in the morning with a great erection, but that was about it. And I had a great workout that, that day, but you can get nitric oxide from arginine, mm -hmm. but you can't take arginine orally. It doesn't get absorbed well. So you have to take citrulline. Citrulline gets converted in the kidney into arginine and arginine is the nitric oxide donor. So you get half from citrulline arginine and the other half you get from nitrates right and what are nitrates nitrates are green leafy vegetables beets kind of root vegetables and nitrates is no2 double minus and then it gets converted in the mouth and sal in the saliva to uh no it's no3 to no2 so nitrate to nitrite that's why they say if you use mouthwash and kill the bacteria in your mouth, your blood pressure goes up and you get bad erections. Yeah. And, and then in the stomach, it gets converted into nitric oxide, which is why if you take antacids or H2 blockers, uh, it might increase your blood pressure a little bit because you don't get enough nitric oxide. And so Affirm, which is my nitric oxide booster, has both the citrulline arginine pathway and the nitrate pathway. I see. All right. Well, Tell us a little bit about the study results then. What what did you find after studying how many men for six months? Um, so our pilot study was 16, 32 now have finished the study. And uh, and there's just one other quick thing. There's another device that we use, which is a vacuum erection device, right? Because you want to stretch the penis in length, which is what the Restorex device is, but you also wanted to stretch it in girth, right? So the way that collagen works Collagen looks like a box of spaghetti under the microscope and it slides alongside itself, right? So you have a longitudinal sliding and also a girth. And so we use a, what's called a vacuum erection device to improve girth. Boom. And so that's why you get girth, length, and function. Now, in our patients, we got almost an inch in length, I think 0.87 inches in length. And we got almost a half an inch in girth. So I think 0.45 inches in girth over a, a period of six months. And everyone in the study got some length in girth. We had one guy get almost an inch and a half, you know, and some guys get a half an inch. I think a lot of it depends on how committed they are to the protocol. Uh, we're going to do a percentage analysis. So, you know, guys with larger penises when they went in probably got more gains on a percentage, you know, but it's probably equalizes on a percentage basis. Ah, I see. Uh, and that, you know, that's the other interesting thing is if you look at who wants a bigger penis, it's not just necessarily guys that with smaller penises, you know, there were some guys uh, in the study that came in and I was like, you know, <laughs> you're, you're doing okay. <laughs> uh, and you know, that's it, different strokes for different folks. If that's what floats right. your boat you know, go for it. And, you know, the other thing is every time I ask these patients, so there's a, a, a really good study that came out last year on PRP that showed two injections one month apart improved erectile function, mm. right? And we're giving six 
injections one month apart. So now there's no validated questionnaire that I could give these guys to find out if they went from good to great. You know, all the validated questionnaires are find out if you go from bad to better. But I asked, you know, I'll, I'll ask these guys, it's called the Likert questionnaire. Is it the same, better, much better, worse, much worse? And they all said, yeah, things are better. I mean, and as a guy, you kind of know when things are are, are are working better. And it just makes, based on the science, it just makes sense that you're going to increase the vascularity of the penis if you inject growth factors. So amazing, you know, of the 32 patients you have in, in terms of the mean growth in length and girth, were there any non-responders at all? Or did you, did you, you know, and you had people that just did very well while some people didn't respond or did they all respond very well? Yeah. So, I mean, we had a couple of dropouts. A lot of those were uh, either for, mostly for logistical issues because we had a fair number of folks that came from out of town. I mean, people from... I'm in California. We had one guy coming from Florida, one guy coming from New York, a bunch of guys coming from all over the, the West Coast. And so some guys dropped out for, for travel reasons. We had one guy that got into a car accident. So, I mean, in a study, you have to report all the yeah. all the people that drop out. But everyone that participated in the study that did their stretching got some benefit out of it. And, you know, like I'm one of those guys, I don't like wasting people's time. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I have heart to heart conversations with my patients. And and I asked them, you know, like, because they knew that they were signing up for a study. I said, you know, was it was it worth it for you? And, and across the board, everyone said that it was worth it. You know, the other interesting thing is if you look at the growth curves, they're pretty much linear. So we checked every month and some guys didn't grow at the beginning and then grew more at the end. And some guys grew more at the beginning and less at the end. But if you averaged out the growth curves, it was pretty linear, which means okay, what if you come in for your seventh or eighth or ninth or 10th injection? And we, and we have, you know, a lot of our local guys are coming in for more injections and they're continuing to get gains in, in growth or length and girth. And so we're going to continue to follow our patients and maybe do a, a follow-up study to find out, is there a limit? This episode of the Thrive State Podcast is brought to you by the Thrive State Accelerator. The Thrive State Accelerator is actually a home course that I developed using the exact same techniques I work with my celebrity clients, CEOs, and executives on how to get them to the Thrive State. The Thrive State Accelerator teaches you how to master your seven bioenergetic elements. That's sleep, nutrition, movement, stress and emotional mastery, relationships, our thoughts and mindset, as well as purpose. In this Thrive State Accelerator, you're also going to get a bonus module on optimization. That's how I talk about supplementation, peptides, all the optimization techniques I use with my clients to get them to the Thrive State. Now, for some of you who are just joining us for the first time, you guys might be wondering, what is the Thrive State? Well, the Thrive State is actually the energy the epigenetic environment we give to ourselves, telling ourselves, telling our DNA how to act and how to respond. And if we want optimal health, longevity, and peak performance, if we can master these seven bioenergetic elements, our ability to have those three things that we just said, optimal health, longevity, and peak performance is at its greatest. And it also prevents you from getting chronic symptoms like brain fog, being overweight, feeling sluggish, acne, pain, all these chronic symptoms, as well as preventing you from getting chronic disease. So getting to that thrive state is really getting to that state to master being that very best version of yourself. So you could show up for you, for your family, for your business, everything that's important to you. So go ahead, check it out right now at kianbu.com slash accelerator and use coupon code podcast 25 for 25% off. Now back to the podcast. This is amazing. So, I mean, re great results that you've reported thus far in a procedure that is quite natural using your own body's products along with uh, some mechanical traction and some very safe uh, nitric oxide boosters. What, how is this different? How is this protocol different from what is currently out there in terms of, you know, other ways, you know, men are are getting enlargements uh, in terms of the safety and efficacy. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a really great question. So, you know, first of all, I just want to say the really cool thing is this year was the first joint meeting of the International Society of Sexual Medicine and the Sexual Medicine Society of North America. So like all the bizarre people like me that do research in this field kind of gathered in Miami and presented research. So we're launching uh, this in Dubai, Qatar, probably Saudi Arabia, uh, maybe Korea. We already have a provider in Canada. I'm looking to go into Mexico uh, with a provider. So there were there were folks from not just the United States, but all around the world that um, that were super interested in this. And apparently, in, it's like big big deal in Korea, penile augmentation. And you know, if you look at the distribution of penile length in the world. Uh, in the United States, it's 5.1 inches. In the Congo, it's 7.1 inches. And in Korea, it's 3.8 inches. So uh, maybe that's the uh, that's the reason. So, mm-hmm. but, okay. So, but in turn, you asked about uh, options. Okay. So one option is injections of filler. So hyaluronic acid, the stuff that people, that movie stars put in their lips or their, their face. The d- disadvantage of that is one, you're only getting girth right? And when you inject girth, you don't do anything for the head of the penis. So you get what I call a pig in a blanket penis, right? Mm. You get a big thick bun and a small head. Mm. But the other thing is it only lasts for a year or two. And after that hyaluronic acid gets reabsorbed because it's a natural biologic substance, then you get these kind of nodules in the penis and you get this kind of lumpy, bumpy penis. And I just, uh, I looked at the other day at what it costs. It costs anywhere from five to $15,000 to get hyaluronic acid injected in the penis. So you're spending five to 15,000 bucks for a solution that's not all that great and it doesn't last. So uh, another option is what's called a fat transfer. Mm -hmm. So guys get liposuction and then the fat is kind of spun around and then re-injected back in the penis. When I say in the penis, it's below the skin and above the rectile bodies. Uh, but I have a couple of patients in my practice that have had that done. And it just, it feels squishy. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't have like a, like when they're, when they're erect, I can imagine like the, the um, erectile bodies are firm, but yeah, they have this kind of squishy outer coat to it. So uh, that I think would be very suboptimal. So it feels like a plush tell you teddy bear. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> right. Not any teddy bear that I would let my kids play with. <laughs> so, the, so that's great. Um, yeah. We don't have any longitudinal, uh, you know, uh, studies past. Um, you know, I don't know where you are in your protocol, but what is what do you think is the staying power of the results that they're getting? Uh, once they stop the six months and stop the P shot and they stop traction or potentially even stop the, the nitric oxide supplements, are they expected to maintain where they're at? Or do you think? Oh yeah. I mean, they'll make, they'll maintain it as long as they're getting good rigid erections. It's like when you get braces, I mean, your teeth don't go back to where they were. Right. Okay. Right. I mean, as long as, cause the thing is every night when you're sleeping, you should be getting 30 to 60 minutes of erections. And if you're not getting 36 to 60 minutes of erections, you should be taking a firm because that will help you get uh, 30 to 60 minutes of erections. And if a firm doesn't do that for you, then you should be taking to every night to get 30 to 60 minutes of erections because nighttime erections are the good Lord's way of keeping your penis in shape. Mm. Right. Because I, I see middle-aged guys all day and I'm not really attracted to them. So I'm not getting erections during the day. And then, you know, I've been, I've been married for more than 20 years and I have four kids, three still teenagers still around the house. So my wife, I'm not chasing my wife around the house every day. So, you know, when, when does my penis get blood flow? When does it bring oxygenated blood and stretch things out? And so that's at night. Every time I dip into dream sleep, into REM sleep, Uh, I'm getting erections and that's what keeps the penis healthy. And so as long as these young, relatively healthy guys are getting good nighttime erections, then there's no reason why it should return back to normal size. 
Now, how would somebody even know that? I mean, they're sleeping during this time. Certainly, if you wake up with an erection, you you know that. But how do you how do you know during the night that you're getting 30, 40 minutes of of, of erection unless somebody there is monitoring it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are there are monitors that we use sometimes uh, in in patients. Um, but you know, if you wake up in the morning with uh, with an erection three, four, five times a week, then, you know, things are probably working pretty well for you. Got it. Uh, and if, but you know, it's kind of interesting. So when you're 20, you wake up every morning and you have a good erection, right? Mm -hmm. And then sometime in your thirties or forties or fifties, or if you're really lucky in your sixties, you'll begin to lose those nighttime erections. Well, how come? It's because your circulation now is becoming compromised, mm -hmm. right? That, that's the first sign that your circulation isn't optimal, right? And you yeah. should take that really seriously because 10 years after you lose nighttime erections, you're gonna start losing daytime erections if you don't do anything about it. And 10 years after you lose daytime erections, you're gonna have your first heart attack, mm. right? So that's, you know, that's pretty strong data mm -hmm. because the thing is the, the arteries to the penis are one or two millimeters. Mm -hmm. And the arteries to the heart are three to four millimeters. So you take pi r squared, the cross-sectional area of the arteries to the penis are about a quarter of what they are to the heart. So they're going to get blocked first. And if you don't take that seriously, like I had a patient the other day, he was 47 years old. He was South Asian, right? South Asians have smaller blood vessels than Caucasian men, right? And so I told him that and I said, dude, you need to get a uh, you need to start exercising, you need to eat better, you need to do all this stuff, which he did. Uh, but I also told him you need to get a heart calcium score, which he put on his list, but I think he worked for Google and he was busy. And a month later, he's riding his bike and he starts getting chest pain. And the good thing is he remembered what I said. He called his wife, his wife picked him up, took him straight to the emergency room. He was having a heart attack at 47 years old, right? He ended up with three stents. Uh, but no myocardial damage, right? But a quarter of guys, their first sign of heart disease is death. And it's hard to come back from that. Yeah. Right. So I, you know, when I talk to my patients, when I'm on podcasts, all that kind of stuff, you know, the penis is a great barometer for your circulation. Yeah. Uh, and when you, when you, that's the reason I, I can't stand, you know, get Roman and blue chew and all those things, because they're just a pill dispensing device, but you really have to understand what your body's telling you. Yeah. Your body's telling you that your circulation isn't as good as it should be. No, that, that's a great point. And for any of you who want to dive into that a little bit more, please check out my first podcast with Dr. Brandeis. As we talked about all the factors involved in maintaining good circulatory health and good sexual health as well. Let's talk about who's a good candidate, who's who's not a good candidate for this procedure. Yeah, I mean, anyone with uh, normal erectile function mm -hmm. uh, that wants to have a longer penis is, is a great candidate. You know, th there's really no... There's no bleeding. There's really no issue. Circumcised, uncircumcised, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, that's the beautiful thing about it is it's, it's totally safe. And, you know, the nice thing is the penis grows symmetrically. So, you know, if you use a traction device, you're going to get a pencil penis. If you use fillers, you're going to get a pig in a blanket penis. But if you get P-long, you'll get uh, like a perfect penis. That's good. I just penis. made that yeah. up. There you go. Perfect, perfect penis. penis. Yeah. What a Hashtag stand perfect for? penis. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm better than my marketing team. <laughs> so um, before I, op I'm going to open it up to um, where we're, we're doing a special edition of the Thrive State podcast in the middle of my Thrive State men's group here. And before I open it up to questions there, I also wanted to ask your take on if people have added additional uh, type of, you know, stimulators such as shockwave uh, to this protocol, what do you think it would, it would uh, do in terms of either augment, not do any, anything, or um, what are your thoughts on shockwave with this protocol? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. So when we are designing the, the protocol, I, I really thought about shockwave because it, it helps uh, the plate that stick to the, the endovascular tissue. Um, but when you're doing a multivariate study, you know, I already have four variables. 
in the end, how do you know if it's a shock wave or it's the PRP or it's the traction? Or, so I didn't want to get into a situation where there were so many variables that you just kind of scramble the pot. Now, that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a couple of uh, companies that make stem cells and exosomes and those kind of things yeah. to see if they're interested in doing uh, an additional study. So you can boost your PRP or you can just use straight stem cells. And so, you know, but I got a million things going on. So no, it's, it sounds like a great proof of concept of just combining a few of these modalities or giving, you know, these excellent results. And we certainly know all those things that we discuss in terms of shockwaves and stem cells. They're being used in other parts of the body where PRP has been used to augment it, I would only assume that uh, we would probably see similar results. So looking forward if, uh, to, to that when, when it uh, comes out. I'm going to open it up briefly. I don't know if the, uh, gentlemen have questions that they would like to ask. If you do, I'll have you raise your hand now. Yeah, and don't be shy because I've probably answered every embarrassing question known to man and then probably several that you haven't thought of. <laughs> I won't uh, put put people on the spot here, knowing that this this is recorded. We we might uh, have some questions after we close off the podcast. You know, there's one cool thing that I just yeah. added that you might be interested in is I just started doing VO2 max testing. Oh, uh huh. Which is so? Do you guys know what VO2 max is? Yeah. Why don't you give a brief explanation of VO2 max? So VO2 max, if you were to say, Doctor Brandeis, give me one metric that will tell me about someone's physical fitness and their athletic potential, it would, by far and away, it would be VO2 max, right? Mm -hmm. So VO2 max is your body's ability to extract oxygen from blood. And so it combines cardiovascular, pulmonary, uh, endothelial, vascular, and muscular function into one mm -hmm. metric. And so you know, the way to think about it is, Say you're uh, walking, you might use two liters of oxygen a minute. Then you start to jog, you use three liters of oxygen a minute. Then you start to run, you use four liters of oxygen a minute. Then all of a sudden you start to sprint, you're using five liters of oxygen a minute. Then all of a sudden a bear starts chasing you, right? And so you're running as fast as you can, but maybe you still only can use five liters of oxygen. Then the whole bear family is racing after you and you can only use five liters of oxygen, right? So you've hit your VO2 max, your body's maximal ability to extract oxygen. Because remember, when you're exercising, you take a glucose molecule and you bring it into a cell and in the cytoplasm, you get two ATPs. That's anaerobic respiration. So that's respiration or using fuel, right? Glucose is fuel that gets you some ATP. ATP is our source of energy. Now, if you can bring that molecule into the mitochondria with oxygen, then all of a sudden you break the, the glucose open and you get 34 more ATPs. And so it's really been fascinating. We have a really good exercise bike and then we hook people up to the mask. We monitor CO2 and oxygen and we follow it. And it was so cool. I had this guy in the other day. He was a ex uh, rower at Harvard, a uh, big guy. And we were just following his oxygen consumption, CO2. And this is the, just, the, it's amazing. It's so consistent. I was like, wow, this guy's really good. You know, I got up to, I think almost 300 and uh, 280 watts on the bike and that's as high as i could go he was at 300 going strong 330 going strong i'm like man he's gonna hit 360 on the on the bike and all of a sudden his oxygen line flattened his carbon dioxide line went kept going up and then i counted to five and then he tapped out mm. and you get it's so consistent i've been i've been i do cancer screening for our fire department and, uh, and we've been doing VO2 max testing on firemen. And from the time the oxygen line flattens out, you get five seconds of anaerobic respiration and then you tap out. It doesn't matter that you want to go further. You're physiologically not capable of going further. And so if you look at elite athletes like cyclists, like cross country skiers, their VO2 maxes are, are through the roof. 
And if you look at VO2 max in older folks and look at that relative to longevity, it's a it's one of the best predictor, if not the best predictor of longevity in men. Yeah, I saw a study um, suggesting very similar. I'm not quite sure if they use VO2 max, but it basically suggested that those in the upper quartile of car cardiorespiratory fitness have actually a five times less all cause mortality of dying of any cause than the people in the bottom quartile um, when it comes to cardiorespiratory fitness. How how were you mentioning VO2 max in relation to kind of this the the, the study that you're involved with? Um, have, have you suggested basically using that as a metric to get people to optimize other areas of their health, including their sexual health with that metric? You know, so what I do in my office is I have a lot of uh, fairly sophisticated testing devices like, uh, you know, body composition scans, VO2 max, you know, we'd run a panel of labs because the thing is in my experience, and these are all generalizations, but guys love numbers, right? You know, women look at themselves in the mirror and say, oh, you know, I'm hot or, uh, I, you know, I look like crap, uh, you know, time to go back for a cool sculpting. But, you know, especially in the Bay Area, like I get tons of engineers and guys that work for Lawrence Livermore Lab and Googlers and Apple people that work for Apple. And they're just they just love numbers. And I love numbers, too. And so I, I like to have a metric that I can follow. And so, you know, when I when someone comes in. I do a body composition and we talk about how much fat they have, how much muscle they have, where the muscle is distributed. I talk about like, okay, you know, you got a beach body, you got good upper body, but you got chicken legs, you know, you got to work on the legs. And so, and it's amazing the results that I've been able to get just because guys look at the numbers and they can understand. It just looks at them in the face. I mean, like I don't shame people. I just show them the cards. Yeah. And showing someone the their their metrics will make them change, I think, more than anything that I've ever seen before. And so, you know, showing someone, OK, your VO2 max is this. It should be at this level or, you know, you're you're below where you should be. And then the next question always is, well, how do I change it? So, OK, well, have you ever heard of high intensity interval training? No. What's that? OK. Okay, well, let's talk about zone two training. Let's talk about zone five training. You know, let me get you to someone who knows more about that kind of stuff than I am, than I do. You know, I'm, I'm just a urologist and a, an ex-athlete, but, you know, I'm not up on those kind of things. But it's a motivating factor, right? Because now like, all right, well, my VO2 max was 35, but I want to get up to 40. Yeah. You know, you're, 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 you're putting yourself like most guys, like we're doing an end of the year Brandeis MD Elite Fitness Challenge, right? It, and, you know, if you do uh, a great job, then you get a T-shirt, right? But it's not the T-shirt. It's like just that you won something for achieving a fitness goal. Amazing. Um, really awesome protocol. The P-Long protocol, I'm pretty sure the world is going to hear about it very soon. So let's talk qu quickly as we close. And before I ask my last question, what's it going to cost for a guy right now to go through the six-month protocol? And I'm pretty sure you're, you're mentioning you're training other providers. How do they they find out more about you and the protocol and all, all this stuff? Where do people go? Yeah, so uh, we built a really nice website, p-long.com. So, you know, if now, I'm sure all your your guys have you know good sized penises, but if they know anyone that uh, <laughs> that is interested in in better penile length, you can just refer them to p-long.com, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we have all the information that they would possibly need. Uh, and it's five thousand dollars for the protocol. Okay, excellent. And uh, just to close, you can't use the same answer as you did last time. Seen a lot in terms of lifestyle factors, PRP, regenerative medicine, so many tools in the toolbox. What's been one of your best medicines? You know, I seem to be able to really connect with my patients and motivate them. Mm. You know, I, I've been doing this for a long time and I don't take insurance, right? So I can spend more time with my patients than insurance-based doctors. It's really sad. I get you know, all my patients complain about their, their insurance-based doctors pretty much because, and it, you know, a lot of these doctors I know, 
and they're good doctors, but the, the health system that we have is just set up really poorly. Uh, and so it's come in, get a pill, leave. And we don't talk to people about lifestyle interventions and getting people off medication. It's all about getting people on medication. And so really it's, it's understanding what makes people tick and how to reach someone in a way that's going to motivate them to take better care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Brandeis. And thank you again for being on the Thrive State podcast. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Thrive State podcast. And if this podcast is bringing a lot of value to you, if you find that your life is just improving with this podcast, that your life is getting to the next level, please consider supporting it. And here's a few ways you can do so. You can do so by liking this video and commenting on this video and also sharing this video with your friends and family. Another thing you can do is go to ratethispodcast.com slash Thrive State. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review there. It will really, really help this show grow. And it, this will give me more time so that I could actually give more content to you just like you got in this episode. And if you haven't already picked up a copy of my book, Thrive State, your blueprint for optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. You can pick it up now. It became a number one new release in longevity. Go to thrivestatebook.com. And if you enjoy the book, please consider leaving us a review as well. And the last thing you can do if you're liking everything here and you want to work uh, more closely with me as well as my team to get you into the Thrive State, Go to kianvu.com slash accelerator and consider joining the home course, the Thrive State Accelerator. It's really the course that I use. It's the concepts that I use personally when I work with CEOs, celebrities, and my high profile clients to get them to the Thrive State. Again, the Thrive State Accelerator at kianvu.com slash accelerator. And because you're a listener of this podcast, I want you to save 25% by using the coupon code podcast25. I hope we continue to give value to you. And remember always, you are your best medicine.